reminder like we're here for you we got your back um make that decision and you know we'll, we'll be there for you to help follow through with everything that comes from that this one hit me so hard in a way I can't even explain because I like my jaw dropped and I pretty much teared up hello hello friends welcome back to acting my age season two I have missed you guys so very much and I'm very pleased to hear that some of you are missing me too. <laughs> um, the break was very nice, very needed. Just got to kind of relax, enjoy the holidays, and get this video shiz figured out. So now I have video as well as audio for the podcast, which is up on the YouTube channel, Acting My Age Podcast. If you want to subscribe and watch the video there too, it's just a whole nother element. It really adds a lot. You can see the vibes. You can see all my crazy hand gestures because I make a lot of them. And yeah, I'm really excited about it. I think it'll be good um, for the podcast going forward. I have a cute ass neon sign behind me. So, you know, go check that out. <laughs> um, we got the green vibes going on. I'm wearing a green shirt. It's like my power shirt to match my power green neon. Yeah, things are going. Things are good. Today's episode is just going to be me, little old me talking about just everything that's on my mind these days in terms of spirituality and just seizing the opportunities for the new year and angel numbers. I'm going to be going into that. Um, the new Oracle cards I got for Christmas, going to be talking about that and just some, just everything, everything I'm feeling, lots of stuff I want to talk about. So very excited to have you all here. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. If you like this podcast, make sure to leave a rating and review on iTunes. And also if you want to subscribe, that would be great. Um, yeah, so let's just get into it. Okay. So first off, I think I want to talk about angel numbers because, um, some of you might have known I recently found out about the whole thing when I realized that I've been seeing like a lot of numbers, a lot of sequences, a lot of one, 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 a lot of one, two, three, four, a lot of four, 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 um, just a lot of numbers. And I always felt that there was a reason behind them. I'm quite a spiritual gal, as you guys probably know, definitely tuning into that more and more every day. Um, but I just kind of would always be able to tell, like something would just tell me, oh, look up. And I'd look at the clock and there would be 1111 or 222 or whatever it is. And it's not like, and I posted about it on Instagram and a lot of people are like, yeah, but isn't that just confirmation bias? Like, aren't you just looking for it? And some cases now, yeah, I do look for it. But when it was first happening, it was like weeks and weeks where I could not look at anything without seeing a number, like a pattern or a sequence or something. Like it was kind of crazy. And I would just start to laugh. Like I'd see another one and just start to giggle like, oh my gosh, it's happening again. Like I know that the universe is trying to talk to me. And so Blue's trying to get in this room. After doing some research, I listened to an episode of Jada Jones podcast, High Key Adulting, about angel numbers um, a little while ago and just kind of learned more about it. Oh my God, this cat is going to freaking drive me up the wall. Hold on, everyone. Okay, sorry, I had to let Blue in here. Um, hopefully he'll be quiet, but chances are he won't. <laughs> so don't mind that. Um, anyway, I started to do some of my own research on angel numbers and basically the idea that makes the most sense to me and that I really resonate with is that the angels, the spirit guides, the universe, the other side, whatever you'd like to call it, God, um, just straight up angels, they're trying to communicate with you. They're trying to communicate with us all the time. And we're so busy in our little human brains thinking about a bunch of nonsense, being distracted all the time, that it's hard harder for them to get a message across sometimes. So... 
Um, one way, one way that they like to do it is by, um, sending us numbers and sequences and trying to get a message across, um, by using numbers. So I really like that. And I feel like once you kind of buy into that idea and believe in that idea, here's blue, blue, he's sniffing the camera. I mean the, the microphone. Um, once you buy into that idea, at least for me, I started to really feel that when I would see a number and it would correlate with something I was going through or something I was thinking about, I'd start to kind of chuckle and just feel like, yep, I know that was for me guys. Like, thank you for that. That one's for me. I got it like message received. And I could definitely feel some significance in the numbers that were being shared. And once you notice it, you can't unnotice it. I got a lot of people messaging me saying like, oh my God, I see these numbers all the time. And once you realize you just can't unsee it, it's always there. And then you realize, holy shit, the universe is trying to talk to me all the time, but I'm just not open to it or I'm just distracted or I'm too busy thinking about my grocery list or my boy problems or whatever it is. So I think angel numbers are really fucking cool. And I think it's like the perfect I think it's the perfect gateway. It's the perfect gateway drug to get into spirituality (laughs) Um, because anyone can see them. Anyone can notice them. And um, once you learn the significance and you start to realize that the number, the the messages apply to what you're going through, it's like, how can you, how can you deny it? How can you deny it? And I think pretty much everyone believes that science and math and nature are all, you know, corresponding like the Pythagorean Pythagorean theorem. (laughs) God damn. You go back to high school. Um, but even like the most science focused person will, yeah, admit that nature and numbers are, have some correspondence. So I just think numerology is dope. Numbers are really powerful. They can tell you a lot of things and it makes a lot of sense to me that the universe and your spirit guides try to, uh, contact you through numbers. So anyway, really long winded, uh, intro there, but I looked up the different, um, meanings, sorry, blue. I looked up the different meanings for all the numbers and people had different things to say, but I just found one that kind of resonated with me and definitely be sure to do your own research. If you want to learn more, there's lots of videos on it, lots of articles on it. And, uh, Yeah, this is just what I found. So let me know if any of these resonate with you. So here we go. Angel numbers. Zero, zero, zero. Zero represents infinity, endless support and guidance from your spirit guides. New opportunities are coming. You might see this when you're hesitant to move on from a situation. It's a sign that you should make your decision and you have their support. So if you're stuck, you're stuck in a relationship, stuck at a job, you want to move, but you're not sure. And you just feel a little bit stuck. You keep seeing zero, zero, zero. It's just kind of a reminder, like we're here for you. We got your back. Um, make that decision and, you know, we'll, we'll be there for you to help follow through with everything that comes from that. I haven't seen zero, zero, zero. Um, I don't ever see zeros. So this one I personally haven't experienced, but wanted to share them all anyway. So, okay. One, one, one. I definitely see a lot of ones. Your destiny. It's time to start speaking aloud your manifestations. What do you truly want and what might be holding you back from what you want? Toss aside all negativity and speak your desires into the universe. Things are moving very quickly. Pay attention to your thoughts. Um, that, that was kind of a mixture of a bunch of different websites that I found, but basic, basically it's like the universe is really paying attention to what you want right now and what energy you're focusing on. So make sure that you're focusing on good energy, because if you're focusing on anything negative, that is going to be, you know, manifested or just make sure that what you're focusing on is something positive, really tune into your desires and what you want most in life. And, um, that is, it's a great time to focus on your manifestations basically. So one, one, one means they're really listening They're wanting to help you out. They're wanting to make your manifestations a reality. So make sure that you're focusing on the right things and you're giving your energy to the right things. Um, Two, two, two is balance Um, up and down, left and right, high and low, all things, you know, two, Um, two, two, two means your life is out of balance and you should look for ways to restore it. You might be working too much or not doing things that you love, Um, not spending enough time with your loved ones, no work life balance you know, that happens. So two, two, two just means, Hey, it's time to reassess. 
what's my life looking like right now? Which I have seen too, too, too quite a bit. So it's time to reassess. Yeah. Um, okay. Three, three, three. It's a magical one. Threes are always magical vibes. Don't you get some magical vibes from three? I mean, look at it. It's like me, me, me. Very, very magical. Um, it means good luck. And it is a call to recognize your life's higher purpose. Three is often related to spiritual things. I already said that. Um, a triangle has three sides. And a triangle is quite the quite the spiritual, holy... I mean, look at the pyramids. Come on. It's a triangle. So lot to unpack there with three. God, blue is really distracting me. I'm sorry. So three, three, three means it's time to tap into your unique potential and um, what you came here to offer the world. So it's really more specifically like, yo, what am I doing here on this planet? Am I really doing the things that I love? Am I doing what I came here to do? Do I even, am I even connected to my higher purpose? Like, have I thought about what my, what have I thought about how I'm going to serve this planet and this world? Have I even thought about that? Have I figured it out? Well, it's time to figure it out. So 444 is positivity and hopefulness. You're on the right track, even if you don't realize it yet. Um, that one I really liked because I see 444 sometimes and I'm like, I saw that it means it's on, you're on the right track, but I really don't necessarily feel like I'm on the right track. So even if you don't realize it, you're on the right path. 444 is commonly shown when you've been pushing towards a goal and it indicates you're almost there and you're on the right path again. 444 means divine timing and to trust that you're going the right direction. Um, one of my friends that I met in college, Taylor, um, she just posted something on Instagram that uh, she moved away from New York. Um, she didn't have a good time there. Her mental health was really bad when she lived there for college and she left, moved to California and she really was wanting to move back and like make it her own and do it, do it over again and make it like the best possible, um, thing that she could experience. And she was nervous to move back because it was hard the first time, but, um, she was considering moving back, getting things lined up to move. And then she kept seeing four, 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 like over and over. And she posted a bunch of photos of all the time she saw four, four, four. And she mentioned that it means this, that you're on the right path and your goal that's coming. Um, you're almost there and you're, you're doing it. So I thought that was really cool. Um, there are so many examples of people that I've seen, um, just since opening my eyes to this, um, notion, I've seen a lot of people posting about angel numbers and their experiences with them. So for me, it is a, it's a done deal. I'm a 1000% believer. I'm like signed up. I bought in. So yeah, anyway, um, Five, five, five means change. Change is on the horizon. If you feel stuck and see five, 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 know that change is coming. Take the next steps you need towards your goals. The angels are supporting you. So a lot of these ones are kind of around change um, because that's usually when we need um, spirit guides or um, help <laughs> is when things are changing and things might be a little bit uh mis mis like it might be a mystery what's going on in your life and that's when you turn towards something outside of you, at least for me, when I'm struggling, that's when I turn towards, um, some help from the spirit guides. So six, six, six is, you know, it's has a bad connotation, the devil's number, but I don't believe that. <laughs> um, it does sound a little spicy coming off the tongue though. I'm always like, Ooh, am I going to call, call up like some scary person in my mirror over there? I really hope not, but 666 means there's an internal battle and negativity that you may have been giving too much energy to. So it's time to reevaluate. If you're seeing this 666, it means that you're focusing on the wrong things. You've been struggling and it's perhaps because you've been focusing too much on certain negative things. And it's time to free your mind of the negativity. Get a better look at what you're spending your energy on. You might be stuck in a negative thought loop or pattern. So this is just meant to shake you up and... I mean, it's no coincidence that if you see 666, it, you go, ah, ah. so it really is meant to shake you up and be like, fuck. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. So if you see that, pay attention. Um, seven, 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 seven is another, another seven is another super like vibey spiritual number in my opinion. Recognizing your hard work is what 777 means. The universe is recognizing your hard work. 
It's a reward from the other side. A spiritual alignment is about to occur. Enjoy the blessings of the universe. So basically, you done good, kid. Here's a reward. It's coming your way. We see all the hard work you put in. 888 is abundance. Material and financial blessings are on their way. So that's lit. I have not seen 888, but I will be looking out for it. Um, Financial blessings are on their way. That is super great. Hope everybody sees some 888 in their life. So it's also a favor being returned. Perhaps you did something really kind for someone and now the universe is telling you, you know what, we saw that and something good's coming back your way. So it also said past life good karma might be coming around. Um, I definitely believe in karma. And so, yeah, I liked that idea. If you did good deeds for others, it's coming back your way. Maybe you're seeing some 888s. 999, a chapter in your life is closing. Picture completion and end of an era. Your journey and goal is almost finished and prepare for a new one. I was trying to think like what this might look like. Maybe you are graduating after your, from your master's program you've been working on for so long and maybe you're feeling a little bit nervous about finishing that chapter in your life and starting a new one. Maybe you'll see that then or maybe, I don't know, you got a divorce or something and this chapter is closing. It's just kind of all of these are very nice reminders that you're not alone. That's how I see it. You're not alone. You're not experiencing this by yourself. Um, you know, you're going through it with lots of other people helping you. Lots of spirits, lots of angels. You're not alone. So one, 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 one. So eleven, eleven. Um, you have the ears of the angels manifest your dreams, which I thought that was so cool because when I was in middle school, that's when eleven, eleven, make a wish became like a thing. Everyone in school would be like eleven, eleven, make a wish, and then we'd like all close our eyes and make a wish. I don't know if that. I think that was a thing everywhere. So I thought that was so, so neat that somehow the universe got all these middle school kids to like believe in making a wish at 1111. And that's literally what it means. 1111 is they're listening, like put in, put in your dreams, make a wish. So I think that's dope. Um, one, two, three, four. I looked this up cause I see that a lot and it's also my birthday is one, two, three. So I just always pay attention to that. One, two, three, four means progress. We're taking methodical steps towards a greater journey. You are on course and keep at it. So, you know, one, two, three, four, it's counting, it's taking the steps. Um, so yeah, that, that is, uh, what I found on angel numbers and I just think it's so cool. And I don't know. I mean, you can really apply it to anything. I think all of these spiritual type of things can be applied to any, any religion, any state of being. If even if you're atheist, well, I don't know about that. I actually should talk to someone who's atheist because I never really have had like, actually, I guess I have one of my friends is atheist, but I just would like to know what they think about these things. So if you're atheist, let me know your thoughts. (laughs) Um, but like this can be, this is from God. This is from God. This is from angels. Um, a lot of religions believe in angels. So I just think it's so cool. I definitely have full trust in the messages that they're trying to get across. And I believe that these numbers do really mean something. So pay attention to what they are. I also saw something that I think 444 can mean that it's it's time to check on a relative. Um, I saw that somewhere. I'm not sure where, but I had been seeing that a a lot. Sorry if you can hear the freaking leaf blower outside. My neighbor is crazy with the leaf blower. So really sorry if you can hear that in the background. Um, anyway, I kept seeing 444 and I didn't know I'm like what family member, but I did, I ended up finding out one of my family members is struggling really, really badly. So I didn't even realize that, but the universe was trying to tell me, um, let me know I needed to reach out and make sure they're okay and be there for them. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I'm just going to tell a little, a wee story that I just, just experienced. So, um, I think like months ago, my brother Druva was saying that um, I should do IIN, which is Integrative um, Institute of Integrative Nutrition. So it's like a nutrition health coaching school. And I've always thought that'd be really interesting. I don't want to be a health coach, but I think it 
could help me a lot and like benefit how I can help others just like round me out as a whole because I'm really into food, really into nutrition. And I'd like to like have some, you know, proper education behind that interest. Um, so I've always kind of thought about it. I've heard about it from the Balanced Blonde podcast. I listened to her. I know she went there and my brother randomly was like, I think you should do it. And I was just like, well, I don't know. I haven't really been thinking about that, but I'll put it on the back burner, see what happens. And so it's kind of been in the back of my head the last couple of months. And then um, I've seen it a few more times just pop up. And then yesterday I did a podcast with my friend Bailey and she's doing IIN. Um, I had no idea she even like knew about it or was interested, but she told me she was enrolled and doing it. And that really um, piqued my interest. I was like, oh, you're doing it? Interesting. And so then I've been thinking about it a lot the last day um, since the podcast. And then um, before this episode, I was just trying to kind of tap in, connect, get in the get in the vibes. And so I did some like deep breathing stuff. I was researching this, which got me thinking about really cool stuff. And um, I did a uh, oracle card reading with these new oracle cards that I got for Christmas from my brother Druva. Um, they are the Sahara Rose A Yogic Path cards. If you're interested in them, they're beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, and I had heard about Sahara Rose, but I never, like, I didn't follow her or anything. I just kind of heard the name somewhere, maybe on a podcast or something, but these cards are amazing. Definitely the deepest connection I've had with a set of cards. The descriptions are wonderful. Every time I've done, um, just a spread and I've asked questions, the answers have been like scarily, scarily accurate, scarily. They've been insanely accurate. Like I'm always just, my mouth drops and I'm like, holy fuck. Like when I looked at, okay, I just got to tell the story. So anyway, I was doing a spread and I asked, um, what does, what do my spirit guides need to tell me now? And, um, I pulled out three cards and they were all upside down. They were all reverse, which I hadn't had that happen with this deck yet. So I was like, fuck, okay, this is going to be, <laughs> it's like, they're here to teach me a lesson. Cause usually when it's reverse, it's like, you got some, something to work on. So I pulled three cards and, um, the first one told me to take six deep breaths. Like that was the first thing it said. It's like, before you even read this definition, take six deep breaths, like breathe in one, two, three, hold, breathe out one, two, three, do that six times. So I did, which really calmed me down. And it just was saying like, you are just kind of floating Time is passing you by. You're not taking a second to breathe. You're not taking a second to be present. Um, you need to breathe, basically, which I definitely resonate with because I've been feeling like time is really, really wacky lately. Time is just going by, and I don't feel like I have a lot to show for what I've been doing with my time. So I definitely resonated with that. Anyway, it just kind of reminded me of the power of the breath and how much better I feel when I meditate, which I started doing again yesterday daily because I stopped during the holidays when everyone was around, but it's very important for me to meditate. And I think that was just a good reminder of that. And then, um, the other card said, uh, here, let me just, let me just find it. Hold on. (sighs) Here's the book. If you guys are watching the video version, you'll be able to see this. Um, let me just find it. Okay. So this is what the second card said. Gina Masta has come to tell you that you're giving up too much who you are, what you have to offer, your divine gifts, and love. You have lost your head in the pursuit of helping others, and it has left you confused, empty, and numb. It's time to set boundaries to remember who you truly are. You don't need to sacrifice your individuality to gain appraisal and acceptance. Instead, use use this experience to go deeper into your truth, and you will come out on the other side as more self-aware and empowered than ever before. This one hit me so hard in a way I can't even explain, because I, like my jaw dropped and I pretty much teared up because this line just fucking hit me. You don't need to sacrifice your individuality to gain appraisal and acceptance. Um, and that is just something I've been really toying with because I just am at the point where I want to just be completely me online. And I do that for the most part, but I don't know. I'm getting more and more like spiritual and kind of more out there, I guess you could say. And sometimes I'm like nervous that people will think I'm wacky or weird or just not be down. I don't know. So, and I'm just 
Okay. Another card I got last time I did it when I asked where should I like, where, where should I go with my social media career? Um, one of the cards was, where is it? Um, let's see if I can remember. I might not be able to. Yeah. I can't remember which one it was, but it was basically the goddess of sexuality. <laughs> and it said like, you need to embrace your divine femininity and sexuality and not be afraid to show it off for who you are. And like, if you basically just encouraging me to be my complete and whole self and show up that way, instead of like trying to only fit into one mold or another, like just show up as your complete whole self. And I got to admit my complete whole self is a little bit sexual. <laughs> if you guys are shocked to hear this, there's no way you're shocked to hear this. You listen to the podcast. Like I like talking about sex. I think it's so fun to talk about and I'm so down to, I'm really open about it. I'm not embarrassed about anything like that. Like I, it's just the human body and that's how we were all made. And I want everyone to, you know, have as pleasurable sex as possible. Cause I think life's too short to have bad sex. So Anyway, and I like showing off my body and I'm not ashamed to do that either, except that, um, the way I was raised is pretty damn conservative, like very modest. And I get really nervous thinking about like what my family or certain people would think of me if I posted something more scandalous, but, um, I just like, don't give a shit really anymore. I'm just trying to focus on just showing up and not caring what other people think, not needing external validation, doing things for me because it feels good and hoping that it'll help other people instead of like doing something that I know someone else will like. So anyway, this card really, really hit me like to my core. And I wrote out, um, you don't need to sacrifice your individuality to gain appraisal and acceptance. I wrote that out on a sticky note and put it by my computer because that just really hit me. Like, I just think right now, I mean, I think it's always been like this, but for my observation, there's a really, uh, clear trendy path on YouTube. There's very distinct trends right now for what videos are cool, what styles are cool, what's hip, what's in. And I feel like I just try to fit into that sometimes, but that's not necessarily me. Like, I just think it is a reminder to reevaluate. Am I doing this because I love it and it's authentic or am I doing this because I want it, I want to fit in with the crowd or whatever. So I think that's a good reminder for everyone. I really liked that quote. So that really got me in my feels. And then the last one, I can't really remember what the last one was, but it was very powerful and it really, really hit me, really hit me in my, my heart. So anyway, I was deep in my feels thinking about all that. And then I was like, I need to look up IIN. Um, I just feel like this is kind of more on the right path. And it's very interesting. So I saw those cards looked up IIN with this book by Sahara Rose, still literally in my hand, went on the IIN website and boom, Sahara Rose's pictures right there. She went to IIN and I literally was like, are you fucking kidding me? That's what I said out loud. And I just started laughing and I clicked around. I'm like, is she the only one on here? And no, there's a bunch of different people. And last time I went on there, her face wasn't the one that popped up. So I just, I'm getting a lot of signs, man. I'm getting a lot of signs at signales as my brother Druva calls them. And I got to listen to them. And I think that's what angel numbers all ties in is that there are signs and there are messages that the universe is trying to communicate with you. And if you are open to them and you listen to them and you follow them, you follow your heart, you follow your gut, you follow, you mix in all that, what the universe is telling you, what you feel is right, what you love, um, what will bring love that, uh, will bring the best outcome. And just listening to that and following that is, um, very powerful and more things will come your way when you start to listen and you start to open your mind and your heart and your ears and everything and see all the signs. Um, and yeah, realize that you're not on this journey alone. And, um, even if, even if, you are feeling alone and you do think you're the only one, they're still, they're still trying to help you and they're still trying to send you messages. And especially when you need it most, a lot of the articles I read, not articles, a lot of the stuff I read, the research I read, um, said that you, these numbers will often appear more, even more when you need help, which makes sense. to me. I wanted to go back actually, because a lot of you might be like, well, what is a spirit guide, Rohini? 
So I first heard about this. I had never heard about spirit guides before I got my psychic reading um, back in, I don't even know when. It was a while ago. Um, actually, I can look on my phone. I got this in June. <laughs> June 22nd is when I got it. 2-2. Um, so that's when I got my psychic reading. And that was the first time I ever heard about um, master, num- or <laughs> master number two, but spirit guides. Um, and archangels and guardian angels and all these things. And I was kind of like, I was into it, but I did not know anything about it. And, um, that kind of just sparked my interest to get into more, get more into all of these things. So there's a lot, I don't know too, too much about spirit guides. If I'm going to be honest, I haven't researched it that much. All I've heard is what different people have to say. Like I listen to a lot of podcasts that have mediums on it or just people who, speak about spirit guides in their daily life. Um, so I think my opinion is that everything is up to your interpretation because I believe that the other side does not, doesn't need the validation to be called one thing or another. So I think whatever you believe and whatever works for you is how they will come through. That's just what I believe because I think they want to help and whatever way they can come into your life to help. If they call you, if you call them an angel, if you call them a spirit guide, if you call them a voice in your head or whatever you want to call it, I think that they're, they're down to help no matter what you um, label them. So some people say it is sometimes people that have passed over cross crossed over in your life, people that have passed away, um, maybe some relatives, your grandma, your grandpa, um, a friend or anything like that. Those can be spirit guides if that is their chosen path. Um, or there are certain guardian angels. There are different names, um, for the main, the main guys. And I truly think I need to research this more. I'll do another episode on it, but, um, the ones that my psychic told me were guardian angel, um, Raphael and, um, Michael, I believe. Yeah. Guardian, Archangel, Michael, Archangel, Ariel and Archangel Raphael. Those are the three that, um, that are on my spirit guide team. So this is so like, I don't even know how to break it down. Um, I just would encourage you to do your own research if you are interested in it. And I will, I will also do more and do another podcast episode on it. But basically everyone has a team. They have a team of spirit guides that's there to help them from the moment they are born. Their soul has a team. And I believe that our souls are reincarnated. I believe in reincarnation. I always have. I think I've maybe told this story before, but when I was like, as soon as I could talk, my mom was shopping with me and I pointed to a dress and I was like, Oh, I want to get that for Gita. We should get that for Gita. And then my mom's like, who's Gita? And I was like, Oh, my other mom before you. And I told a whole story about Gita and where we lived and all of that. When I was like three or four, really, really young. Um, when that channel is still open and you're not embarrassed to say things like, Oh, my mom from my past life. Like I totally believe in past lives and reincarnation. So anyway, I believe everyone has, um, a team of spirit guides that is there to help them and they're with them their entire life. Everything they go through, they never go away. Even if you do bad things, they're still there. If you do good things, they're there and they're always there to support you. So I have found it very, very helpful now when I pray or when I journal or when I meditate, I, uh, talk to my spirit guides. I'm like, what do my spirit guides have to tell me today? And I've gotten some very powerful, responses, like things that you cannot explain if it normally, like they're not, there's no other explanation. Um, and maybe I'll talk about that sometime, but yeah, I totally, I totally believe in it. And it's just one of those things that you kind of have to experience it to believe it. So if this sounds a little bit out there for you, I understand, but that's just my experience. And I think there's a lot of comfort in knowing that you're not the only one out there. Um, at least I, uh, for me. So yeah. Um, yeah. Try to talk to your spirit guides, see what they say. And also doing card Oracle readings, asking your spirit guides for answers through the cards is really, really good, really good way to communicate with them. The best way I've found. And then the other way that I've found to be really good is automatic writing where you just take your journal, you have a pen, 
and you just set a timer and you write and write and write and write. Maybe you ask a question at the beginning, like what do my spirit guides need to tell me? Or it can be something more specific and you just write and you don't stop writing. Even if you're literally writing, 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 I am writing, I am writing, I am writing. Just keep writing for the whole time on your timer. And in my experience, it starts to turn into just channeling, um, channeling your spirit guides or channeling someone who's passed over or anything like that. So try that out if you're interested, but also Oracle cards are a great way to, um, communicate. That is that. It's a little, it's a little spiritual start to the, to season two. Okay. Let's just get into it. Um, I just scratched my armpit on camera because I forgot that you guys can see me, but I'm a little bit itchy. <laughs> so so if you watched if you guys watched my youtube channel and you watched my 2021 intentions video um you know that i've been writing a little bit and i had this day where i just totally the writing was flowing out of me i could not stop writing it just was coming out and it was such a great feeling. And I read some of that, um, in that video, but I also wanted to read more of it, the more deep stuff in this podcast, because, um, I just, as soon as I write anything or come to any realization, I just have to share it. It's like, well, according to my psychic, that's what I'm supposed to do in this life. I am a healer and a communicator. So the way that I can help heal the planet is by communicating. So here I am communicating word vomit. Um, so yeah, it's, it's crazy though. As soon as I put the pen down, I'm like, I need to share this. I can't wait to share this. So then I have to kind of be like, wait, wait, do I really need to share this? Is this ready to share? Is this something I should share? Do I, should I keep this personal? Should I keep it private? So this is just something I wrote about manifestation. You speak your desires into the universe, release them, let them be known, let the spirits work their magic, have full trust in your divine path. Everything you want is within reach. Speak it and it will come. Manifestation is just speaking your desires into the universe and having trust that they will come. Um, and then I wrote this on a, in a time when I was really, really happy and just feeling that happiness, the warm, happy, bubbly feeling in your chest of like, holy shit, I'm so happy right now. This is the happy emotion and I have it coursing through my blood. I wrote this to <laughs> explain that. Feel the glimmer in your chest. Feel the small smile on your lips. Appreciate the presence of this moment. Savor it. Gulp it whole. You are loved. You feel joy. You realize I am happy in this moment. I am truly happy. And... Trust the process. Know the highs are highs and the lows are lows, and you will live through it all. You were made for this. The choice is yours. Next one. Be creative at all costs. Oh, by the way, these are things that, these are like reminders to myself. When I was thinking, what do I need in this new year? What do I need to remember? Blue's playing with my journal string. Um, this is what I was kind of writing to myself, and I thought you guys might like them too. So first one was trust the process. Second is be creative at all costs. Never stop dreaming. Never think the vision is too crazy. The most beautiful garden was once a dream. You survive off of dreaming. It fuels you. Next one, be you and you only. I read this in the, the video. Don't put on someone else's hat. It looks good on them, but it doesn't fit quite right on you. Many days and years can be wasted trying on hats that don't fit. Next one. This one is bigger because I had some feels for this one. Blue, can you stop? Stop. <laughs> oh. Um, okay. Reconnect and unplug. Throw your phone under a big blanket, in a closet, in a locked room, or maybe just throw it into the ocean for a while. Everything you're seeking is already here. You have it all within you. Meditate, dance, sing. Be with the ones you love. Go for a long walk and marvel at the moss and the trees. Wonder how you fit into such a magnificent landscape. Breathe in, breathe out. Drift into the trees, drift into the cold breeze. Realize you are one. Realize you are home. Your home is wherever your soul is free, your mind is still, and your heart is full. Welcome home. Ah. Okay, next one. Cry because you feel it all. We used to think tears escaped out of us as a weak link, not following orders. Tears are for those who mourn. Tears are for those who don't have it all together. Now we know the truth. Sometimes life's beauty rises and rises and swells within us, rushing and coursing through our being so fast and so fluid that there is only one place for it to go. 
in delicate droplets ca- cascading down our cheeks. Tears are a recognition from one human to another, sharing an intimate exchange. I see you. I feel your heart. I love you. What a joy it is to cry so freely, to feel so deeply, to be reminded you're alive. Okay, last one. This one's probably the deepest one yet out of all of these. And I might write these out just so if you guys want me to, let me know if you want to come back to them. So this one, release the hand you hold. Anger, bitterness, and resentment appeared to be lovely companions at first. The three amigos, there whenever you thought you needed them. The friends who lead you on a hike down the wrong path. You hold hands with anger. You listen to bitterness as it shows the way. You sit down and stop climbing and resentment tells you to. And now, much to your surprise, you find yourself lost and stuck. In the wilderness of your mind, in the jungle of your soul, in the rolling fields of your heart. Stuck. No way out, it seems. Release their hand. Unfurl their grip on you. Tell them politely, I don't need you anymore. Your heart begins to beat again. Your feet find the rhythm. You realize you have so much to be grateful for. Your soul dances with joy. Your feet join along. All of a sudden, you're running, skipping, jumping. You're on the right path. You did it. Gratitude took over as your guide. You will never be lost again. Hee hee. Ah, thank you for listening to those. Um, it feels so good to write those. I really, 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 really want to write a book one day. Um, I really do. And for some reason, I think it has to be after I have kids. Because I just feel like I'm going to get the most intense lessons and growth of my life when I have kids. And I feel like I'll be able to channel and write really great things that hopefully will resonate with other people too. But I really do want to write a book one day. Okay, so I wanted to go back a little. This is a description of what angel numbers are. Probably should have said this earlier. Um, from Joanne's Sacred Scribes. I found this in a video. Um, it's a website. So angel numbers, what are they? The phenomena of number sequences, sometimes known as angel numbers, is becoming more and more prevalent day by day. Thousands upon thousands of people from all walks of life, from all parts of the world, from every creed and religion, are reporting the phenomena of noticing particular number sequences on clocks, timers, car number plates, billboards, and from all kinds of sources. According to respected authors, therapists, and spiritualists around the world, um, the phenomenon is occurring. <laughs> this phenomenon is occurring as a new spiritual awareness is taking place and gaining momentum on our planet. Age of Aquarius. No, it's not dun dun dun. It's the opposite of dun dun dun. <laughs> As a race, people are evolving on a spiritual level, with the number sequences being messages from a higher source. Your angels and or spirit guides guide you through your thoughts, feelings, words, and visions. They also show you signs, that is, things that you should see repeatedly with your physical eyes. One of the signs is repetitive number sequences. Angels and those of the spiritual realm do their best to get our attention and, and to communicate with us. In this way, they help, they help us heal our own lives. However, we often discount the signs that they give us, writing them off as mere coincidences of our imagination. Your angels often communicate messages to you by showing your sequences. It, I can't talk. By showing you sequences. It, fucking A. Sequences. Not sequences. Sequences. Gosh. They do this in two ways. First, they subtly whisper in your ear so that you will look up in time to notice the time displayed on the clock or the phone number on an advertisement or something similar. The angels hope that you will be aware and acknowledge that you are seeing the same sequence of numbers over and over. The second way in which angels show you meaningful numbers is by physically arranging for something like a car to drive in front of you that has a specific number plate and hope that you realize you're seeing the same number sequence again. They want you to notice, then look into the message further. When you notice a particular number sequence recurring, ask the angels what they're trying to tell you, and you will find that the angels will give you additional information. Monitor your thoughts carefully and be sure to only think what you want, not what you don't want. The great Pythagoras said that everything in the universe is mathematically precise and that each number has its own vibration and meaning. The placement of the numbers in a sequence holds special meaning. Um, yeah, so that's just a good little su a summary that I, that I liked. Um, to sum up angel numbers. I guess I just have to, I feel like I should tell you, I feel like I should tell you what I did a few weekends ago. <laughs> I can't keep any secrets from you guys. It's ridiculous. So, um, 
Oh, it was literally like a week ago. It wasn't even a couple of weekends ago. I did mushrooms. <laughs> I did uh, psychedelic mushrooms, you guys. I took them, some psychedelic mushrooms. And it was really cool. Um, I have been interested in it in a while. I've been learning more about ayahuasca and psilocybin mushrooms and just mushrooms in general. I think they're very fascinating. Um, lots, there's like 20,000 different types of mushrooms that we've discovered so far. Crazy. And also the oldest living fossil is of a mushroom. So that's pretty fucking cool. And for every step we take, there is three miles of mycelium under the ground, which mycelium is the network of like the fungal network under the ground to connect. They connect the trees. They help the trees talk to each other. If you guys haven't watched Fantastic Fungi, the documentary, you really should. It's so, so interesting. Um, anywho, really into mushrooms. And I have listened to so many brilliant, smart people that I really look up to who have talked about how um, having a psilocybin mushroom experience has really helped them and impacted them. And if you microdose with psilocybin mushrooms, there's been um, studies to show that it will kind of repair your brain. Um, it helps with neuroplasticity. It helps just with all these things. I don't have enough facts off the top of my head to be able to properly hype it up, I feel like. But um, if you are interested, listen to Joe Rogan's episode with Paul Stamets. He has two episodes, but he talks about, Joe Rogan talks about one of his friends who's a professional fighter. Um, he was microdosing and um, he got to a point where he was so tuned in and tapped into the energy in the room and just connected to everything after microdosing that he was able to predict what his opponent, like the moves his opponent was going to make. So if his opponent swung with his right hand, he would predict it before he even did it. And he felt just more tapped in and was the best fighter he's ever been. Um, and when he stopped microdosing, he definitely noticed a big difference. So I thought that was so fascinating. And I mean, I, again, I believe that these plants are here for a reason. People have been taking psilocybin mushrooms for so fucking long long, long, long time. It's a sacred thing. There are ceremonies, um, around psilocybin mushrooms and they've been, you know, if you read ancient texts about it, they've just been known to help cure and heal different things and help you experience another world. So I think it's fascinating and I wanted to do it and I didn't want to just like growing up on Whidbey, people do mushrooms a lot. It's kind of a thing. Like Sage did it a couple times in high school and a lot of my friends have done it and had crazy experiences, but I just wanted to wait until the perfect time because in high school I thought about it, but I didn't want to do it. So it seemed like a great time to kick off the new year with a little experience, little experience. Um, and so we did, and it was very, very cool. Very interesting. Um, we went in nature and it was like at first when we had taken just a few, um, mushrooms and it was a lower dose. The, it, everything just seemed so, so vibrant. All of the colors in nature were so vibrant. Like there was these red berries and they were the reddest berries I've ever seen in my life. Like everything in nature just kind of jumped out to you. Like, Oh my God, look at this. Look at this bark. It's so like icy green, blue color. Like, look at this grass. It's so fucking green. Look at these berries are so red. Everything just really jumped out. And I, I was having some super deep thoughts, like very lovely, wholesome thoughts. And I just was feeling like, you know, walking through the forest, I was like, you know what? We are so new to this scene. These trees have been here for so long, like trees, nature, moss, mushrooms. They've been here for fucking so long. And we just showed up to the party. Humans are so new. We're such a new, new addition to the, to the group. <laughs> and we just are so disrespectful of nature and we don't take care of it and we don't even think about it. We don't appreciate nature as much as we should. And uh, we're so connected to it and it can heal us so much. And I just was thinking all these very wholesome thoughts, thinking about how cute these little mushrooms were. And also, by the way, I've gone to look for mushrooms in the forest many times. Never have I found so many as when I was had ingested mushrooms. Like I was seeing them everywhere. So many kinds, crazy kinds. They were so cool. So anyway, very magical experience. Felt really connected with nature, really appreciative, very grateful for nature. And also feeling like 
we humans need to respect nature a lot more. And yeah, nothing crazy though. Like I was very coherent. I could talk to anybody. I was just having really deep thoughts. It was a very lovely experience. And then we took some more to try to deepen the experience. And I started fucking tripping balls. (laughs) Um, We're sitting at the table talking. And then I look over about 15 minutes after I took like more. And the walls of the yurt started melting. (laughs) I've never done any psychedelics before. I've never done acid or anything. So this was a completely new experience. And also after doing mushrooms, I can confidently say, I don't think I will ever do acid. I would much rather just do uh, mushrooms because they're natural. And yeah. Um, so anyway, the wall started melting and I was like, oh shit. Okay. It's happening. The wood grain on the side of the walls started moving. Um, just like moving all around. And I started realizing that I was tripping balls. And so I laid down in this really fluffy furry carpet and did not get up from that carpet for like five hours. (laughs) And that carpet felt like the nicest, softest thing I've ever felt in my life. And the carpet was moving all around. Like the, the fuzziness of the carpet was like blowing in the wind, like a wheat field or something. It was crazy. There were some dirt specks on the ground that turned into letters. Like they looked like little beads with letters on them. And I was rearranging the dirt specks into words. So insane, you guys. I've never had any experience like this. It just was crazy, crazy. And then the ceiling was moving and it was rainbow and all. I saw a Chinese dragon made out of rainbows. <laughs> it's so hard to explain and it sounds nuts if you've never experienced it. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a very interesting experience. I couldn't really move. I will say that. So if you're someone who likes to really be in control, perhaps, you know, be very careful with all of this, be very careful. Um, not definitely not encouraging it, just sharing my experience. I think, I don't think these things should be taken lightly. Um, I think you should have some respect and like honor to these types of plants because they're here to take you to another level. They're not just like, I don't know, silly little things you can toss around and it definitely should be considered, um, very carefully before you do these things. So not encouraging. And also I don't think I would do it if I was younger. Like I'm really glad I didn't do it in high school. So again, just, I'm not encouraging anyone. I'm just sharing my experience. Um, but I do think it's really interesting to listen to other people's experiences, um, taking mushrooms. I think it's cool. So anywho, um, walls, the walls were moving. Everything was rainbow. Um, I couldn't really move <laughs> my, I, my, I was laying on the ground feeling the carpet and my eyes were watering cause they always water. If I lay on my side, they usually start watering. And if you guys have seen euphoria, there's a scene in euphoria when they were on drugs and they had like a glittery tears coming out of their eyes. That's literally what it felt like. Like I was imagining that I had glittery tears coming out of my eyes. Um, the whole time though, I could definitely like hear what was going on. I could hear the other people I was with. Um, they were cracking jokes and I was laughing. Um, but my, I was seeing crazy things. I was going like this with my hands and it was like a kaleidoscope. So like the light, how the light would switch when I did this. Um, I had my hands over my eyes, by the way. Um, for those of you who can't see, it was like a kaleidoscope. There was rainbows and things were moving and it was crazy. And, uh, um, yeah, I wasn't having, I, I think that next time if I do it again, which I probably will not anytime soon though. Um, I think next time I want to go more introspective because I was so distracted by everything I was seeing all the crazy shapes and rainbows and things that I didn't close my eyes. And from what I've heard, when you close your eyes, that's when you have like really deep introspective thoughts or when you can connect to like your spirit guides or things. So that is what I want to do next time. But this time, my first ever time doing it. I just was so distracted by all the stuff going around on around me. Um, music was really impactful. Like the music, the mood of the music completely changed the mood of the room and what we're experiencing. Like for a while we had this EDM playlist on that was just stuck in a loop and it wasn't that big of a playlist. So a lot of the songs are playing over and over. And I started to really not like that. Taylor Swift kept popping up over and over like old Taylor Swift. And I was getting really annoyed. I'm like, turn Taylor off. Like stop Taylor. I don't want to listen to you anymore, which is so sad because I like Taylor Swift, <laughs> but she was really annoying me in the moment because it kept playing over and over. So anyway, then I suggested we put on classical music and that was absolutely the vibe, the vibiest vibe. 
Wow. So every song had a different emotion. Some songs were happier. Some songs were more sad, more serious. And every song like just took us on a trip and our conversation and our emotions were completely reflected from the music, if that makes sense. So our conversation would get really happy and light and we'd start talking about really happy memories and things when it was like joyful music. And then if it was more sad, we would start talking about like really deep things and it was really cool. And I definitely in my regular sober life, (laughs) um, feel a connection with music and know how big of an impact it has on my mood. But in that state, it's like none other music is a part of you. You're a part of the music, all that good stuff. So, oh, and the other thing that I thought was really cool is that I could access my memories really, really clearly. And I'm not someone who normally can do that. Like I can't just call up like a very vivid image of my childhood. I can't do that normally, but I could then. And I was able to like call up all these really specific moments and I could see the room, who was there in the room, what it smelled like, what it looked like, what the the energy was in the room, what happened. And I could see it so clearly, like it just was so clear, which was really, really cool. Very, very cool. And yeah, had some really good conversations, really deep thoughts, really deep convos. It was good. It was a good experience. Um, and then ever since then, my dreams have been really, really vivid and I can remember all of them when I wake up, which is not usually the case, like multiple dreams that are extremely vivid, like high definition, full color dreams. And I can wake up and remember them, which is really cool. So that, that I wanted to share it just because I think it's interesting and I'm here to talk about what's interesting. And whenever I hear other people's stories with ayahuasca or with, um, Uh, psilocybin mushrooms I think it's fascinating so yeah I'm just here to expand it in your mind (laughs) if you think it's not for you that I absolutely respect that not trying to push this on anyone but just sharing what I'm experiencing so yeah it was really cool I would be interested in microdosing I don't know but I want to obviously look way more into it and um yeah but I think it's cool Yeah. I just wanted to share that. I don't really know why I was debating if I was going to tell you guys, but I tell you guys everything. So it is what it is. Got to share, man. That's why I'm on this planet to share. So, um, so yeah. Okay. That is what's been on my mind, what I wanted to share. Um, I want to get in more into these topics. Um, I really would love to have like a medium on the podcast, psychic on the podcast. I'd love to have an Oracle or Tarot card reader on the podcast. Just very cool stuff. Dude, if I could meet Paul Stamets, have him on the podcast, that would be insane. But he's a very busy man, but so interesting. Ah, Yeah. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed lots of things to unpack here from this episode. Angel numbers, psychic stuff, spirit guides psilocybin mushrooms (laughs) lots of things oh also i should mention that psilocybin mushrooms are illegal in the united states which i think is ridiculous but federally they're illegal so definitely not encouraging you guys to do them um that is my disclaimer i think although i think colorado decriminalized psilocybin not sure but there's been so many studies proving how psilocybin can help people who are really suffering, people who are dying, people who have severe PTSD. It's very, very healing. It's very magical. It's truly a planet, a plant that's a gift that's here to help. And um, yeah, so anywho, got to put in that disclaimer. It is illegal, but marijuana was not too long ago too. Um, anyway, <laughs> gosh dang. Hope you guys are doing really well. Sending you lots of good vibes. Um, I posted about how it's kind of weird after the new year, the first like week or so it's kind of the new year blues because at least for me, I felt like as soon as the clock struck midnight, I was going to be totally re-energized, like have a completely different outlook. Everything bad that happened in 2020 would just be left behind, but that's obviously not the case. It's not reality. And there's still just as much work to do on myself as there was last year. So yeah, just hang in there. I know it's kind of rough. The vibes are weird right now, but we got this. We're going to get through it. And I hope me blabbing about things for the last hour or so has helped 
distract you or open your mind or your heart or any of that. And just know I'm always thinking about you guys. And just know I'm also planning some merch, some Acting My Age merch. And it's going to be really cool. It's not going to be cheesy. You're going to want to wear it. I'm going to want to wear it. I'm going to be probably wearing it all the time. Um, lots of ideas for that. And yeah, so look forward to that if you're interested. Okay. Love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in and I will see you next week. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to Acting My Age podcast with me, Rohini Elise. See you next week and don't forget to leave a review if you liked it.